So here we are actually inside Premiere. Now, if this is a little intimidating to you, a little overwhelming with all the buttons and gadgets and whatnots all over the screen, don't worry about it. We're going to be covering that in detail later. Trust me, folks, a few chapters down the road, you will feel extremely comfortable here. So what is Premiere Pro? Premiere, in a nutshell, is a video editing program. We can use it to trim video, to chop it up, add effects, transitions, to render out to other medium, to DVD, to Blu-ray, to cell phones, to iPods, and all that stuff we're going to cover here in this training. Premiere is also what's referred to as an NLE, which is short for Non-Linear Editor. You see, in the old days, you used to have to edit in order. If you had tape, you'd have to cut it up and tape it back together in order to create an edit. But with digital footage, I could just click on a clip like this, and let's say I want it over there. I could move it around. No harm done. Whenever I'm done, I could just come back and move it back where it was. I can even move video to different layers. Let's say I want this video on layer two instead. No harm, no foul. Also in the old days, you used to have to edit in order from beginning to end usually. But with nonlinear editors, we don't have to go in a line, hence the name nonlinear editor. We could edit the end first and then the middle. And then what comes between the end and the middle and then the intro. It doesn't matter. We have total control because we're using digital technology. Now, there are many nonlinear editors out there. So the next question is, why use this one? Why use Premiere Pro? That's what we're going to talk about in the next movie. So why use Premiere Pro? There's a lot of nonlinear editors out there. Why use this one? Well, my personal reason, this probably isn't the textbook answer, but personally, my reason why I use Premiere, first and foremost, is that I love Adobe. I think Adobe makes the best creative software out there on the market, hands down. And so I love Premiere because it fits nicely into my workflow. There's better integration with industry giants like Photoshop and After Effects, integration that's unparalleled anywhere else. As a matter of fact, a little bit later on, we're going to devote an entire chapter to integration with other Adobe products. We'll talk about Premiere's integration with Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, Encore, and Flash. If we have the whole production studio, we'll have access to a feature called Dynamic Link. Dynamic Link allows us to bring in After Effects projects, and they're live. They're not rendered out to a movie format. And so if we can go back to After Effects at any time, make changes, add stuff, make updates, and then we see those changes instantly in Premiere without the need to save and render. It's just a phenomenal time saver for those that use After Effects. And let's face it, if you're looking for special effects, who doesn't use After Effects? It's the number one motion graphics champion out there. Another great feature of Premiere is something called Clip Notes, which allows us to use PDF technology for document review. If we have this video sequence here and we love what's going on, I can take this and export this to a PDF using Clip Notes, and then my boss or my clients and customers can review it, and I could bring their comments back here to my timeline and see them as I work. There's also amazing integration with Encore, previously called Encore DVD. Encore is used for professional DVD authoring and is now included with Premiere. And check this out. I can now go to File, Export, Export to Encore, and I could burn DVDs and Blu-ray discs literally with the click of a button. Now, I'm using Encore here, but I don't have to even know Encore. I just click OK, and it burns it for me. Premiere also shares a common interface with other Adobe products and also a lot of common keyboard shortcuts. So learning one program in the production studio is like learning all of them a little bit. Also, Premiere does everything I need it to. With advanced audio, with advanced video, it has all the tricks, all the bells, all the whistles, all the features I expect from my video editing application. And that's why I use Premiere. This video is a shout out to all my brothers and sisters on the Mac platform. You see, for years, Premiere has only been available on Windows. With CS3, Adobe brings Premiere back to the Mac. And so as a tribute to you guys, those that use the Mac, we are doing the entire Essential Training Series on the Mac platform. Now, that's with rare exception. There are a few planets in the Premiere universe, as it were, that are only available on Windows still. But it's going to be less than a handful of movies on Windows. The bulk of the training is going to be here on the Mac. The good news for both Mac and PC users is that the interface is unified on both platforms. When you just look at the interface here, the only way you can tell that you're on Mac or Windows is by looking at the very top of the screen in this little bar here. A couple other differences here that are very small and minute, but I'm just going to point them out here anyways. 
When you're on PC, you get to preferences by going to the bottom of the edit menu. On a Mac, you go to the Premiere Pro menu, which doesn't exist on Windows, and then go to preferences. Also, I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. Using keyboard commands, we can work much more efficiently in video editing applications. And so you'll hear me refer a lot to the command key. Well, the command key on a Mac is essentially just the Apple key. The official name is actually the command key, so I'll be calling it the command key. The command key on the Mac equates to the control key on the PC. The control key on the Mac and the control key on the PC are not equivalent. They do different things. But other than those few differences, there's really not much difference between Premiere on a Mac or Windows. And so again, as a tribute to you Mac people and as a way to say welcome, we're doing the bulk of the Essential Training Series here on the Mac. In this movie, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what's new in CS3. Now, in order to understand all the new stuff, you probably want to be an experienced user. So if you're brand new to Premiere, I would say just skip this video and move along. I'm going to tailor this video to those that have an online training library membership and just want to jump to this movie and find out what's new in Premiere so they don't have to watch the whole dang thing. First and foremost in my mind, I think the biggest thing that's new in CS3 is all the software that's included now. On Location is included for direct-to-disc recording. There's an entire movie later on about On Location. So if you're interested in taking your laptop with you on a shoot and you want to record straight from your camera to disc, you might want to check out On Location. It's a pretty powerful little tool. Ultra is also included in Premiere, which is a great keying application. Encore, previously called Encore DVD, which is a very full-featured, powerful DVD authoring program, has now replaced the DVD authoring features that were inside of Premiere previously. Using Encore and Premiere together, we can now output in one click to DVD and to Blu-ray. And also, if we take our project into Encore, we could export very easily to a SWIFT file, SWF, which is a flash file. And we could put our DVD presentation on the web. No flash knowledge necessary, which is great. Another brand new program included with Premiere CS3 is a program called Device Central, which allows you to preview video and other content on cell phones and other mobile devices. Also new to Premiere CS3 is a new timer mapping feature. If you click on a clip, you'll notice now, in addition to motion and opacity, a standard effect has been added called timer mapping. And we can click on a clip and basically keyframe this rubber band to animate the speed of the clip. If we click on the Effects tab, click Time Warp here, there is a new effect called Time Warp. We could also use this Time Warp effect to animate the speed of the clip. As you can see, there's a lot of other advanced options here as well. We can go and add motion blur to a video clip after the fact. So this isn't a live motion blur like in After Effects where you're moving something and it's blurring it. This is Premiere going in and sensing in an already rendered video clip what's moving and applying motion blur again. And there's also some great project panel enhancements, namely this smart search feature. Right now I only have a few clips so it's no big deal, but I could say, you know what, I'm looking for something on zombies. And no sooner did I type Z-O-M than Army of Zombies pops right up. Amazing. Also, I could search not only in the name, but in any one of these categories as well. Also, there's new bin behavior. If I click this button to create a new bin, and then I double-click the bin, it opens in its own floating window, not in the existing project panel. So we could have essentially multiple bin windows open. And if you don't like that functionality, you can go back to the preferences and change it. Now, finally, the last big new feature that I really, really love is Replace Clip. If I drag a clip to the timeline and I hold the Alt key, I'll hold the Alt key here. Now if I let go of the Alt key and I just drag and drop, I'm going to perform an overlay edit. But if I hold the Alt key, it will perform a replace edit, meaning it will completely replace the clip that I'm dragging it and dropping it on top of, but it will preserve the in and out points, all effects, etc., etc. This is an amazing feature. Let's say you're working on some low-res footage and you want to get to editing it, and then later, at the end of the workflow, your client gives you the high-res video. Well, you can just swap out and replace clips as necessary. And if you were to go to the help, Adobe's help that comes with Premiere, and look up the new features, replace clip I don't even think is mentioned on there. But to me, for my money, this is one of the most helpful new features that is in Premiere CS3. 
the ability to take a watermarked clip and then replace it the last minute with a clip that doesn't have a watermark. That's just such a great workflow help. Now, there's a few other bells and whistles, but in a nutshell, that's the big stuff that's new in Premiere CS3. It's really a great upgrade. Upgrade. Folks, I am so incredibly excited about this training series. Let me tell you why. We had this groundbreaking idea at lynda.com to use as exercise files public domain footage. Now, let me explain what public domain is in case you're not familiar. Public domain are works that do not have a copyright or that have copyrights that have expired. And there are some great works out there that have fallen into the public domain and no longer have a copyright. So basically, you can copy them, duplicate them, distribute them as much as you want without getting busted. And because of that, we're going to be looking at some great movies and some not so great movies that have expired their copyrights and are now in the public domain. For example, we're going to be looking at the horror classic Night of the Living Dead. Now, we're also going to be looking at some not so classic movies like this ninja spinning around and frolicking in Ninja Death 3. We're also going to see this fat detective raised from the dead by aliens to help take over the world. We're also going to look at this robot sent by Martians to Santa Claus to kidnap him. So as you can see, we have some great cheesy stuff ahead of us as we go forward. Again, I'm so excited about this. I've never seen this done or even heard of it done anywhere. This is completely groundbreaking and revolutionary. And it's going to make such a difference when we talk about movie making a little bit later on. When we talk about great camera angles and using establishing shots and all these different video making concepts that are so hard to describe and define but are so easy to pick out in professionally made movies. The use of this public domain footage is really going to make this training series new and exciting and very different from what you've experienced before.